Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Redneck Racing. We are getting very close to finally being able to get the motor and transmission in the 66 Buick Skylark. The motor is done, the transmission is pretty much done, but today what we're going to be focusing on is fuel injectors. So I've got all my fuel injectors right here. I have them already decapped. If you want to learn how to actually decap the injector, there's a bunch of different videos online. It's really easy. I just did it with a bench grinder. And um, today we're going to be kind of cleaning them and flow testing them. So I'm going to try and rig this all up with my fuel pump and my regulator, which I have right there. And I'm going to try and um, flow match the injectors. I have 16 of them. So I'm going to get the eight closest ones and then also figure out what they actually flow so that I can enter that into the Holly Terminator X system. I'll show you guys what I mean by that a little bit later on, but if you don't have uh, an injector that's already in the Holly system, then you have to basically build your own injector in the software, and I'll show you guys how to do that, but we need to know what they flow first. So I'm going to jump right into this start setting it up I'll show you guys how I set this up once I figure out exactly I've got kind of a plan but I'm not entirely sure yet I'll figure it out and then show you guys how everything works once I get it all figured out okay the, uh, the contraption is set up. I'm not real happy with it, but I think it'll work. Basically, we've got feed and return from the uh, gas tank. Then we got the fuel pressure regulator with the gauge. I just set fuel pressure at 60. So if I touch this terminal, the ground, the ground the fuel pump, that should jump up to 60. So we're good there, and then basically I take this terminal and touch it here and the injector opens. I did get one of these things. Um, you definitely don't need to have one of these things. So I think in the end what I'm going to wind up doing is with the fuel pump running, I'm going to touch this and the fuel pump wire to that terminal, ground everything out at the same time and just watch a timer on my phone probably and just let the fuel injector hang open for 10 or 15 seconds and then do the calculations from how much fuel it puts into the beaker at 15 seconds so it might have to be a little while uh, this is a 500 milliliter beaker and I would definitely recommend getting like 100 milliliter because I really don't think or maybe a 250. Yeah, it starts at 50 milliliters. So, I don't know how long the injector takes to fill stuff up, but um, based on what I've done so far, it would take a minute for the injector to fill that whole tube up. So, I think about half of this would be about right. Okay, guys. So, as you can see here, I am mostly done. I have three more to go. I've done 13 so far. And um, I have underlined the ones that are candidates for being selected for the, the final injectors. Um, we have six of them so far, three left to go. Um, and worse comes to worse, these two are pretty good. The only problem is I noticed they were leaking just a little bit. Like, they didn't even have a drop fall out of them. I just noticed that as I was testing the other ones... They would start to form a little bit of um, gasoline moisture on the bottom of the injector. Makes me a little nervous, but I think they would probably be fine if I cleaned them up a little bit. I'm going to come over here now and show you a little bit about uh, how this looks. So as you can see, I've got the injector stuff down in there, and then it's not going to do much right now because there's no fuel pressure, so... I'll get the pressure up and then when you tap this onto here 
You can see the injector fires away into the tube. And it looks like this is another good one too. You can tell right away when they're bad because it just piddles out of there. This one's spraying nice and it has like a nice fog. Some of them will just shoot like a little stream off to the side. This one's shooting nice and straight. So probably another good one. And hopefully one of the last two is also good and we'll have a full set of eight nice injectors. All right, here's the reading from that last one. This one is pretty good. It's right about it. That's the 200 line right there. And the way you read these is you read from what's called the bottom of the meniscus. So there's like the dark fluid and then right at the very tip, it gets a little bit lighter of a haze. <clears throat> you want to read from the line between the solid dark fluid and that little bit of a lighter haze. That's just the, the fluid kind of curving up the side of the beaker. So this one looks like we're just below 200, probably one, I'd say 199 almost. Um, technically, when you're doing measurements like this, again, I would recommend getting a beaker that has increments of one milliliter. This one has graduations or increments of five milliliters. And technically, when you're doing measurements like this, you're only allowed to be accurate to half of your smallest graduation. So my smallest graduation is five. I can technically only be accurate to two and a half. But as you can see, I've been trying to do my best to not do that and guess a little bit. But at that point, really, all it is is guessing. So I'm going to put 199 for this one. And that's probably another good one. I would take the 199 over this 200 that leaks a little bit. And I'd probably keep, hang on to this injector as a spare, maybe clean it out and it would be good. So I've got two more to go. <clears throat> and then uh, I'll show you guys how to crunch the numbers afterwards to figure out the pound per hour edges. All right, the testing is pretty much complete. Fortunately, second to last injector. Perfect. 210 seems like so 210 seems to be but I've I've testing these full blast for 15 seconds and 210 milliliters seems like a good baseline for them. I had a couple of them or well really only one that was above that right here 217 and then the rest were between 200 and 210 for the good ones. And the ones that weren't good were well below that. <clears throat> um, the last one I did, it didn't work at all. I had three of those that just did not work one bit. So um, what I'm actually doing right now is I've taken injector number one. And I blew some air in it and picked around on the tip with a pick and tried to shoot some brake clean backwards through it um, in hopes that it will stop leaking before when I would before when I would hold the pump on it it would um, form drips on the tip and as you can see there is uh, nothing dripping off of the uh, end of it. It's not focusing on that one, but as Phil Swift would say, it's completely dry. It's a little bit, there's a little bit on the tip of it, but they all have that. Before I messed with it, there, there was like a drop hanging on it. So I think that one's fixed. I'm going to reflow test it because chances are it actually flows a little bit more now. And then probably going to use that one instead of of uh, one was it this 199 right here oh so this one is fixed going to use 1567911113 and 15 i think that's 8 and then um yeah i'll show you guys how to do the math Okay, so everything is all completely said and done now. I have underlined in black the injectors that I'm going to be using. 
I decided not to use the 217 and to use this 199 instead because it gets the injector spread a lot closer. So um, those are the injectors that I'm going to be using. I'm going to jump onto the computer real quick and show you guys how I converted these values from milliliters per second into pounds per hour and then show you guys how to input that into the Holly Terminator X software. Okay, so you can see right here I've got the, I just, I'm just using a Google spreadsheet. I've got all my injector numbers listed right here. These are what they flowed in milliliters per 15 seconds. And then what I did in this cell is if you haven't used Excel or um, Google Sheets, anybody who has Google can use Google Sheets, um, you type in equals and then it would be cell B2 divided by 15. And so then that converts it to milliliters per second. You have to remember to put the equals in right here. So I just type in this cell equals B2 divided by 15. And then you take this and drag, you grab onto the bottom little knob right here and drag it down and it'll recalculate it for all of them. I'll just change them all green there. But then it'll run that calculation for each of these cells and spit the result out in this row of cells, dividing it by 15. And then I did the same thing over here in this row of cells to convert from um, milliliters per second to pounds per hour. And the conversion for that is you take your milliliters per second and multiply it by 5.714. And then um, again, just drag down and it'll calculate all the values into this column. So now that I have um, the pounds per hour of all of my injectors, I basically want to find the ones that are closest together. And a typical rule of thumb is you want all your injector injectors to be um, pretty much within four pounds of each other. Um, so I kind of just looked through, got the ones that were the closest, and then I calculated the average here. So you can do that too. You, um, you can see right here, equals average, and then pick all the cells that you want to average. Um, comma separated, as you can see right up here, and then it'll give you the average. And then I also calculated the spread of the data, which was I just had to find my minimum and my maximum, and then take your uh, your max minus your min. So as you can see, my spread is 4.5. So all of my injectors are within four and a half pounds of each other. It's not great, but it's pretty good. They're within f everything is within five pounds of each other, so it should fire all right. And then I think what I'll wind up doing is these two big injectors, this 80 pound injector and the 82 pound injector. I'll wind up putting those in the back two cylinders, so seven and eight. Those are the cylinders that are farthest away from where the fuel comes in and have been with stock fuel rails. Those are the cylinders that are known on LS engines to run a little lean. So I'll put the bigger injectors in there and then you can adjust fueling for individual cylinders. So I'll just wind up watching the spark plugs closely for the first little bit and um, make any adjustments cylinder by cylinder if I need to. So I'm going to show you guys um, how to set this all up in the Terminator X software. So what I have here is just the base calibration for the uh, for a six liter um, LS naturally aspirated engine, and so you just you click on your this EFI box right here, system ICF for the system parameters, and then engine parameters, and you'll get the fuel injector information. So you can go in here and create a completely custom injector. But what I did is I actually just used the, they have a bunch of GM injectors right here. So if you're decapping GM injectors, you just have to find the part number of your injector. So right here I have a picture of it. So this would be a GM injector 25317628. So now we can see if we can find a GM injector 628, which is... Right here, two five three one seven six two eight. So there, that way we have um, the injection strategy, strategy, and the injector off time 
all set in already. Rated injector pressure, 60 PSI. Remember I set the fuel pressure regulator at 60 PSI. And then you just want to change this right here from 24 and a half to 78.5, which is our average value that we calculated in, in the uh, Excel table right here. 78.519.52, will work just fine. So that's how you set this all up in the Terminator X software. And then you would just wind up flashing this tune, you know, set up the rest of the, the tune the way it needs to be set up for your engine. If it's turboed, you would set it up for, uh, for a turbo setup, but this is how you would program that injector into the Terminator X. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. I hope you were able to learn something from it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away in the comment section. As always, if I can't answer it, hopefully somebody else will be able to. So uh, feel free to ask away. Make sure to stay tuned. We're going to be firing this car up here very, very shortly. The transmission's almost put together. So that'll be coming, that video will be coming on next. And then we'll be uh, putting everything together and firing the car up. So keep watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.